What's up guys, I hope everyone is doing well. So a few weeks ago we started the Unilad series on the channel which basically involves me putting together some PC build guides that you guys can go ahead and follow along and all the parts are supplied and chosen by our sponsors. So last time round we did an i3 build so this time we are going to step it up. As always I would like to give our sponsors Cooler Master, Box.co.uk and of course Asus a big shout out for making this all possible so thank you very much for that. With that said, let's jump in and take a look at the part list this time round. So first up we have the Intel i5-7600K. It's a great mid-range processor that will more than satisfy your gaming needs. The motherboard we will be pairing it with is the Asus Strix Z270F, so a great board for those RGB lovers out there. Cooling our CPU will be Cooler Master's Master Liquid 240 that will definitely get the job done especially if you plan to overclock your system down the line. For the graphics cards, we have one of my favourite cards in terms of design and that is of course the Asus Strix GTX 1060 OC Edition. For RAM, we will be using 16GB of HyperX Fury and the case that we will be using is the Cooler Master Masterbox 5T which has plenty of room inside and a nice acrylic side window to show off your build. And last of all, for storage we have a 240GB HyperX Fury SSD for our OS and our main games and a 1TB Seagate Barracuda for everything else and powering the system is the Cooler Master V750. Ok so now that we know all the parts that will be in the system, I will leave all the links down below in the description for you guys to go ahead and buy the parts and follow along in this build guide or you can be lazy and go ahead and buy a pre-built system, whatever suits your needs so let's get started guys. Ok so as I always say, building a PC isn't as hard as you think. All the tools that I will be using is a Phillips head screwdriver and an awesome knife for opening all my boxes. The first step I always take is to prepare the motherboard before putting it inside the case. So first of all we will install our processor. Just make sure that you hold this at the sides and don't get your greasy fingerprints all over it. If you take a close look at the socket you will see a triangle on the cover and the same triangle is also on the processor itself so we are going to match them up obviously. So let's go ahead and install it. Press down on the retention arm and pull it slightly to the right and lift upwards. Next carefully set the processor in the socket, no force is needed here at all and after that all you have to do is close the little latch back over, press down on the retention arm and lock it back into place and as you see the cover will pop off and you can put it back in the box for safekeeping. Next up it's time to install the RAM. Take note of the little notch on the RAM stick itself as we will be matching this up to the same notch on the dim slot. Next press down on the dim latch to open the slot and from there you can go ahead and seat your RAM sticks. Match the slots up and press down with some force until they click into place and you are good to go. So now we have to remove the included fan in the system in order to install our cooler. So to do this we first have to remove the drive bays. Pull the levers over as you can see and remove both caddies from the cage. Next remove the thumb screw that you see here and the drive cage will easily lift away. So now it's time to remove the included fan. It is not held in with screws like normal fans so we have to break the little clips by taking our screwdriver and pushing them into the hole. From there when you are done the fan can be easily removed. So now that we have done that the next step is to install the motherboard in the case but first we have to install the included standoffs that you see here in the case. Simply screw them into the holes as you see here. There should be 7 in total, 3 on the bottom, 2 in the middle as there is one already in place and again 2 up top as there is another in place up there. Next we are going to install our IO shield so make sure that you have it the correct way up of course and clip it into place as you can see you will have to use some force. Now we can take our motherboard, place it in the case, just line it up with the IO shield it's very easy to do and you'll be absolutely fine. Now all we have to do is go ahead and secure the motherboard down, take the included screws that you can see here and work your way around all the holes in a crisscross pattern until they are all occupied. Now it's time to prepare our cooler for the CPU, so take everything that you see here out of the box as well as the Intel mounting bracket. The instructions on setting the cooler up are very clear and easy to follow, but let's just do a quick run over them. First go ahead and install the Intel bracket on the AIO pump. Just for reference they will look like this. 
and they screw into place very easily. When you have it set up, you should have something that looks like this. Okay, so now we have to remove the front part of the casing by simply lifting upwards from the bottom and pulling it away. Okay, so the next step does require some patience, so just make sure to keep your cool. Take the cooler, as you can see here, place it against the front of the case and line the screw holes up. Take the extra large screws, add a fan and put your first screw in. These screws can actually be tightened with your thumb so it makes everything a little easier. Also, take note how I have the fan cable facing the rear of the PC and this is for cable management purposes and will just make things a lot easier and tidier for you. So when you finish one fan off, go ahead and move on to the next and then when you're finished, tighten it all up with a screwdriver and you are finished. You should have something that looks like this. And from there, you can go ahead and pop the front panel back on the case. Okay, so now we have to go ahead and prepare the mounting plate. Again, and the instructions are super clear and when you put it together, it should look like this. Now you have to go ahead and install it. So we go ahead and do this at the back of the PC by passing our four bolts through the motherboard. You may have to foot her a little bit, but just take your time and you will get there. Now you will want to install the four plastic covers over the screws like you see. And from there, what I suggest is you take the cable from the pump and go ahead and plug it into the CPU fan header to try save squeezing your fingers in afterwards. Now go ahead and apply some thermal paste. You should aim for a pea sized amount in the centre. I am just a messy guy for sure. So now comes an important step. Peel the safety plastic off the cooler before installing it. It may seem very straightforward but believe me, a load of people I know have left this on and it will get bad really quick. So now go ahead and pop the cooler on and use the four screws to secure it down. I thumb tightened them first and then I used a flat head in a crisscross pattern to go ahead and secure it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and install our power supply. Remove the shroud by undoing the thumb screw on the rear and then sliding it outwards. Now take your power supply and install it. The cables that you will be using is a 24 pin for the motherboard, an 8 pin for the CPU power, a 1 8 pin for the graphics card and then a SATA cable and a Molex cable. Now install the power supply into the case, fan facing the bottom and use the four screws that were included with the case to go ahead and secure the power supply into place. When you have everything all tightened up, what you will want to do is go ahead and throw your cables out of the rear of the case and reattach the power supply shroud. So now what I do from here is start plugging in all my cables, starting with the cables attached to the case. First of all, take the USB 3.0 cable and plug it into the board as you see here. Just make sure the notch on the cable does line up. Now take your HD audio cable and plug it into the far left on the board. Now the fun part, take the front panel connectors and connect them up here. The connections are clearly labelled, so just take your time and when you are finished, you should have something that looks like this. Okay, so now go ahead and plug the SATA cable that is hooked onto the case into the power supply like this and also do the same for the Molex connection. Now we will take our 24 pin and give some power to the motherboard. Just make sure to take care when routing cables as you want it to look neat as possible. Now take your 8 pin cable and give some power to the CPU. This is quite a tight space so just take your time and make sure it has a good connection and it is not loose at all. So now we will go ahead and install our graphics card. It goes in the top PCIe slot so we have to remove the second and third bracket in order for it to fit in place. From there, push the lever on the slot down and simply push the card into place. Line it up and use a little force and it will click in nice and easy. Now just attach the two screws you removed from the bracket to secure the graphics card in place. The last step is to take the 8 pin cable from the power supply and give your GPU some power. Ok so we are nearly finished the build, the next step is to go ahead and install the hard drive and SSD and get the cage back in. Installing the hard drive is simple, take one of the caddies and you will note the four metal pins, simply line these up with the holes on the hard drive and you are good to go. From there slide the caddies back into place. Now to install the SSD, slide it into place upside down as you can see in the little bracket. And from there, line the screw holes up and then secure it with the four screws that are included. Okay, so before putting the cage back in, I would connect all my cables to my hard drives as there is very limited space when the drive cage is back. So once you have done that, simply slide the drive into place and reinstall the thumb screw to keep it nice and firm. From there, plug your two SATA cables into the motherboard as you can see and you are pretty much ready to go. 
Okay, so now all that's left to do is test if it works before cleaning up all the cables, etc. So go ahead and plug the power supply in and hook it up to a monitor. If everything is working, the PC should start up and boot into the BIOS and you should see all your nice RGB lights on your board. If not, make sure all your cables are secure or hit me up below and I will try and help you out. After that, you can go ahead and tidy up the cables, reattach the side panels and just make sure you are happy with how everything looks. You will want to go ahead and install Windows now, so just follow the guide linked below to do so and enjoy gaming. Okay, so that pretty much rounds up the build guide and I hope that you guys enjoyed this and found it easy to follow. This PC was a little harder to build than the i3, but with some perseverance I'm sure any of you guys and girls will do this without any trouble at all. And just remember, if you have any problems, you can hit me up on Twitter, you can hit me up in the comment section down below. I always answer back. You can check back on all my videos. I nearly answer every single comment, so don't be afraid to ask any questions. I'm sure you won't look stupid or anything like that. So as always, I will be testing this with all the latest games just to see how it performs. And I will be posting that video probably around Wednesday next week. So definitely make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you would like to see the benchmarks for this video. As always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe, be kind to each other, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace. Thomas, my dad, can't